Let's talk NFL uh, for our last closing minutes. And again, we don't have a whole lot to go on because nobody's really seen any of the key players in the preseason. This is almost like college now. We don't have a whole lot to go on with the NFL in week one, other than what we've, of course, looked at in the offseason, the draft, free agency, last season. Let's start with the game tonight, Baltimore and Kansas City. Kansas City is a three-point favorite. And by the way, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, Mark, before you get into this is it's really hard to, to even use you know, your, 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 your magazine for trends and stats and such when there hasn't been any games yet. So, yeah, you can look at what were they in, as a home favorite, as a road dog, and things like that. But there are a few things, and we'll talk about them in here in just a couple of uh, minutes, that you can still use for week one. But I just find that it's, it's, it's not as easy to do that until we kind of get into the season for a few weeks. Well, I use things out of my database largely, Greg, for the first week, and not so much situational because they haven't played any, any game to put themselves in certain situations here. What I like here is John Harbaugh, the best revenge coach in the National Football League. He lost at home as a favorite in the AFC Championship game to Kansas City last year. That will get John Harbaugh's attention here. Other side of the coin, you got a quarterback in Lamar Jackson who just shines in the role of an underdog. 13 1 and 1 against the spread in the regular season. My goodness. Uh, and you've got a Kansas City football team that is just eating up the press all offseason long about how good they are. They're going to three peat. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. Travis Kelsey's buying a racehorse named, uh, in the name of Taylor Swift. My goodness, I'm getting sick and tired of Kansas City already and they haven't played a game. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I hear you. <ya. laughs> I'm playing Baltimore to get the revenge here. I like I like Har Harbaugh as a dog. I like him in revenge, and I like Lamar Jackson as a dog as well. All right. Uh, Friday night, Green Bay and Philly. Philly's a two-point favorite. I mentioned this on your show yesterday. I just, I, you know, look, I, and we, we made our NFL predictions last week. I did not have Philly in the playoffs. Um, and I think that if that's going to be the case, this is the game that kind of gets, gets it all started because if, if they don't make the playoffs, then chances are it's going to be because they 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 – they get off to a sluggish start and the whole thing about their head coach is true and they really don't like them. And, and they just, it's just not good after the way the season ended last year. But um, I think if they win this game, obviously then uh, that changes, but uh, either way, I just think green Bay, I just like green Bay better. I mean, I have a many NFC championship game. I don't have the Eagles in the playoffs. So this is an easy one for me, but of course it's week one, anything can happen. Do you have anything on this game? Well, you know, the only thing I have in the game is uh, my good friend Howard Eskin from WIP is the Eagles sideline reporter. And uh, he is not going to be at the game because the National Football League wouldn't let anybody other than personnel from the Eagles and players go to the football game. And the reason they didn't is because crime runs rampant in, uh, in oh. Brazil, especially in Sao Paulo. They've been instructed to stay they, not to leave the hotel grounds. They are not allowed to carry uh, cell phones in their hands. They're not allowed to wear jewelry, flashy jewelry and so forth and whatnot. I think this is a game where both teams are just saying, get me the hell out of here. I don't even know why we schedule a football game like this. And that being the case, I think Philadelphia is the better football team and the better football team usually wins games on neutral sites. I'll back the Eagles in this contest. And don't go back to Brazil. I mean, NFL should have known this. And maybe they scheduled this four years ago. I don't know. But this should be a lesson. No more Brazil. No. Okay. Um, now let's go through some of the games on Sunday. And I wanted to mention this because I, I really like Cincinnati. I don't like giving up a lot of points like this. It's eight and a half in the NFL. But I like it. And even though, let's keep in mind, there's no Drake May. Maybe he comes in. But – they got a veteran quarterback per set starting. So remember that. But I just, there's two reasons I like Cincinnati. One, I think Joe Burrow is so amped up to get out there, sort of like Aaron Rodgers. The problem is Aaron Rodgers is 20 years older, so he can't do what Joe Burrow can do. Uh, that I think Joe Burrow is going to be a man possessed in this game. I think he's going to come out firing uh, and he's going to try to get all that uh, frustration out uh, in this game. But the one that really matters, and I've been trying to, I've been taking advantage of this for the last couple of years. Uh, and again, you can find it in the magazine. Cincinnati is 23 and six straight up, 22, five and two against the spread. Their last 29 non division games. And I'm just going to keep taking the Bengals every game this year in a non division spot until that trend goes the other way. 
Well, I can't blame you. You don't want to step in front of that. And if that's the horse that you choose to ride on, you have to stay on the horse. You can't get off of it because the other horse looks attractive. New England does not even come close to looking attractive. Uh, all they do is you're wondering whether or not they can hang with the number in a game like this. The trends say, I'll give you some trends that say that they can. Uh, you look at Cincinnati, uh, you look at them, they're terrible in the series. They only cashed two of the last eight. They're just three and 11 to the spread when favored by eight or more points. On the other side, you look at this uh, New England football team, they're really good in this role of a dog in the role in which they're at. Seven and two to the spread is a dog of seven or more. I don't know whether Cincinnati plays down to New England's level or not. Uh, everything I've read about Joe Burrow says no. He's just itching to get the season started, and he wants to prove to everybody that they're the team to beat in the AFC North, which they could be. Uh, it's a tough, tough game for me, but I will not lay the points in this. And I think, you know, there are things called suicide pools out there where you got to just pick the straight up winner, advance, and move on. Like the circuit has the circuit survivor. The Cincinnati will be the circuit survivor. Odds on overwhelming favorite, 90% of the people are going to have Cincinnati in their ticket this week. Wow. And you know what, Greg? What I've learned in playing survivor pools is you don't ever do that because when if a team like that loses, 90% of the pool's done. And then yeah. you've got some pretty – clear sailing here. You just let them wait for this stuff like that to happen. So I kind of jumped out of cover in the, uh, the point spread part of it and went to the survivor part of it. But nonetheless, I'm not going to bet the football game. Yeah. The one thing I'm a little concerned with is Cincinnati's gotten off to slow starts uh, over the last several years. That's a problem. Uh, and also um, uh, again, the thing about New England that I think is important to note is that I, I'd rather myself, I'd rather just stand back and see how New England uh, plays this season, maybe the first quarter, the first half. And are they showing that they're the same team trend-wise, stat-wise? Because a lot of that is Belichick and a lot of that is Brady. And I can't, I, I can't dif differentiate the two. So it's like, I mean, I can differentiate the two. So, I, but, but maybe I can't. And that's what I need to find out is – is this is is this is all oh, those historical trends and stats that I need to think twice about because this is a completely different franchise right now. Well, you know, this New England football team can play some defense now. Maybe that they was can. a Bill Bel Belichick thing. We don't know that. Yeah. They had a stretch last year in four games. They only allowed forty eight points and they didn't win a game. Yeah, uh, it's because he had no offense. Mm -hmm. uh, which might be the case again here this year. So it makes picking this game very, very difficult sure. for me. And if you are on Joe Burrow from the get-go, you need to stay on Joe Burrow yeah. from the get-go. Uh, I just am cautionary because New England has this play, I'll, I'll take you playing you down to my level type of a makeup about them. And keep in mind, as you said, that even though Brissett's Brissett, he's better than what they had last year. Yes, he is. And like you said, they got good defense. And it's eight and a half points. And it's week yeah. one. All right, Tennessee, Chicago. Three and a half point spread. Absolutely loved what I saw in the playbook magazine regarding this one. NFL quarterbacks selected number one are three, 20, and one straight up in their first career starts since 1983. The spread has dropped just a little from four to three and a half. So I'm um, all over Tennessee. Yes, they have the rookie head coach. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of there. Uh, and a lot of new there, a lot of young there. But Levis is a second-year quarterback. Caleb is that rookie we just mentioned. And Chicago is now, everybody's talking about him. You know, and maybe they will have a good year. This is a team that I believe, just like you, played really well late in the season. Their defense really came through. So even if the rookie doesn't play well, they got a good defense. And maybe they rattle Levis. Maybe they pick him off a couple of times. Because that's how um, that's how their head coach won football games or helped win football games in Indianapolis before he got the gig. So, but I, I just that's a trend that I'm just not going to not only not go against, but I'm going to jump all over for Tennessee. Well, you know, I can enhance that trend a little bit for you and tell you the last 15 times it's happened, they're 0 14 and one of the spread oh, running. Okay. okay. So you know that's a nice neat trend. Look at Tennessee and what they've got going on this year. New head coach. Hires his father as the offensive line coach, Bill Callahan, Hall of Fame line coach. Uh, in fact, he just won the Dr. Paul Zimmerman Award this year uh, for excellence uh, as far as an offensive line coach goes. And I got to tell you a little sidebar story here, Greg. 
Do you know who Paul Zimmerman is or was? Yes. Well, he, he was, was the he old was a, ESPN uh, handicapper, right? Well, he was a customer of mine also. Okay. And uh, he would always call in. And this is back in the days when I'm answering the phone. Hey, Paul, how you doing? I'm doing good. Never, ever, ever complained. Ever complained. I could have been on the world's worst losing streak and never, ever complained. He was just thankful, uh, I think, of the position that he had. And really, really, really a nice guy. And when I read that about the fact about Callahan being winning that award, I was just tickled to death to hear that. So now what does Tennessee do? Now they've got uh, a new offensive line coach here. They've got by far the best under the radar set of wide receivers in the National Football League. Oh, yeah. And, it, it, okay, so now you're going to give Will Levis a little bit more time yeah. with Callahan operating this offensive line. Right. Derrick Henry's not there. They're going to concentrate more on giving Will Levis some time to throw the football here. I think it was said on our podcast here, it's, Victor brought it up, I think he said, that Will Levis is the quarterback who's uh, favored to have the most passing yards in the National Football League this year. Yeah. Yeah, um, unbelievable. And so a lot of I, that also has to do with the fact that Tennessee is probably going to lose games, but – that's a good thing if you are on the side of Will Levis throwing the football because he's going to be behind a lot. Yeah, he'd be throwing 50, 60 passes a game, right? Yeah, so either way, you're in a good situation. Yes, you are. And I think they're in a good situation this week here as well. I love the Callahan factor. I love the anti-Caleb Williams factor working in this game, and I think Tennessee wins, wins the football game. All right, a couple more to go. Dallas-Cleveland, big matchup. We both like Cleveland this year. It all depends, of course, on Watson staying healthy. So – uh, everybody in Cleveland, sort of like with the with the Jet fans with Rodgers, we're all going to be, you know, just keeping our fingers crossed that these guys stay healthy, especially early on in this game. Can really get the Browns off to a good start. They're only a two and a half point favorite. I mean, I think the line is is pretty accurate. I thought they'd be three three and a half, but they're two and a half. But yeah, look, I just think Cleveland's a better team than Dallas. Well, this line actually opened up Dallas the favorite in the football really? game. Yes, it did. And I was, I, I was wow. sort, of, sort of drooling and getting ready to make all these Cleveland Browns cases. And then, then they went to the favorite. It was like a five-point swing in the line. And I, I, I'm just not going to chase that. Sure. Uh, you know, negatives to Cleveland, yeah, 3 21 and one straight up in their season opening games. Uh, but 2-0 and all the last two years, which oh, is a good thing. Which, which is a good thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know, what I don't like about the team is last year, they were the number one defense in the National Football League. But you break that down, Greg, home in the road. They were completely the opposite. At home, they guarded the fort, and on the road, they just gave it up in droves. Now, the good thing for them is they're at home this particular week. I would have loved to have Nick Chubb back in this lineup. You don't. And for that reason, that's why I thought this game would be more of a pick em than it is a favorite. I'm going to pass on the football game because, number one, my heart's with Cleveland. You and I both like Cleveland to go deep into the playoffs this year. And this would be a key pivotal football game for them to win. Dallas had this really, really topsy-turvy offseason led by Jerry Jones and causing all that turmoil that he did. I think it's a real tough handicap here. Yeah. I think Cleveland wins the game, but do they cover the number? That's the question. Uh, Washington and Tampa Bay just wanted to talk about this one because Washington 6-2 and two, road dog last year uh, against the spread, of course. Tampa Bay 2-0 and oh, straight up ATS week one under Todd Bowles, but they were on the road last year. Uh, now they're at home. Uh, week one. Um, but maybe this is even more important. Uh, Bucks just three, eight and one against the spread as home favorites under Todd Bowles. Uh, I actually thought this line was going to be six. So I'm surprised it's only three and a half. Um, you know, I, I picked Tampa Bay last year and I'm doing it again this year. So I'm going to pick them here. Uh, but I also picked Washington <laughs> to surprise everybody and win the NFC East. So this is one of those games that I'm just going to be – I'm just going to sit back and watch and hopefully be entertained and hopefully watch two teams play good football so I'll be happy that even if the team loses that uh, maybe they'll pick it up next week. Well, this is a game I think you get your first win with Washington, Greg, uh, this this weekend here. We call out a great stat in the in our write-up of the football game. Washington was the worst team in the National Football League in net turnovers last year. And if we did a study, or I read a study, I should say, since 2011, the teams that ranked dead last in net turnovers, those teams combined in those years, let me read this here, uh, 53 and 117 in that negative turnover year. The following year, the very next year, how about 177 and 112? These teams bounce back unbelievably uh, well. And now you've got a new head coach in Dan Quinn. The turnover machine's no longer there. Sam Howell, he's out in Seattle. They'll suffer with him out there that way. 
And I think Jaden Daniels was, is going to be a great quarterback in the National Football League. I don't know if out of the gate he's going to prove that, but I think he was a great selection with the number two pick. I like Washington to up in Tampa Bay. And then the final primetime games, Rams at Detroit on Sunday night, Jets at San Francisco on Monday night. Detroit's a three-and-a-half-point favorite. San Francisco's a four-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, look, Rams getting a little revenge is possible. Um, I'm going to side with Detroit, but I'm not picking the game uh, because, again, it's week one. There is some revenge in there, uh, even though I like Detroit. And with the Jets in San Francisco, uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm a Jet fan, so you know what the deal is there. They're getting close to two to one on the money line. So maybe I might just, you know, maybe do a parlay or something with the Jets on the money line to start the week with a game that I might like at the, you know, in next week, not the other way around with everything on the line with the Jets. That's for sure. Uh, because this is obviously a very good San Francisco team. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a very entertaining game because I'm very interested to see if the Jets defense is for real. I know how good they are, but what I mean for real is, is can they be elite? And I think that this is going to prove them or, or this gives them a chance to prove whether or not they could be an elite defense. So um, anyway, either way, I just think it'd be really good games to watch. Well, you know, you know how much I love the Rams. We talked about them on our show all season long. I've got them winning the Super Bowl. Uh, and I have Detroit be... winning, the, uh, getting to the Super Bowl this year. So we there both we go. like okay, these so teams. Now... Now yeah. we have a matchup of those two teams in this particular football game. Yep. Jared Goff, okay, back against his old team. He did it last year. He knocked them out of the playoffs. That's the revenge for the Rams in this particular football game. Goff is really under the radar, sneaky good to the spread with Detroit. How about 35 and 16 to the spread? He just knocks numbers down. Wow. Does Jared Goff since he's been with since, he, since he's been with the Lions. Uh the I do like the Rams in this football game. I'm not going to go crazy with them. I like that they get their playoff revenge. And I think Jared Goff gets disappointed in this particular game. I think, again, like I say, the Rams have the makings of being a real good playoff team this year. Do you have any feeling on the Monday night game? Yes, I like the Jets in this football game here. I'm not a big San Francisco fan this year at all. They're a Super Bowl losing team. And you know how those teams take bad lumps. And you yep. look at Philadelphia, what they did last year. It's the second half of the season. My goodness. An investigation should have happened there. Uh, and you've got the Jets here. They were ranked in the top five in team defense here the last four years in a row. I mean, now you're going to add some Aaron Rodgers punch to this offense here. I think it can only help. He's going home. Uh, you know, he played at Cal Berkeley. I think he's yeah. going home here in this football game. I think the Jets take this game right down to the wire. 